everyone, Jessica Whitaker here. I am a New York City based photographer and today we're going to be talking about four ways to apply color theory into your portrait photography. In this video we're going to be talking about how to apply color theory into your portrait photography with color combinations otherwise known as color harmony. So we're going to be covering two categories. First is complementary colors and second is analogous colors and I also have two bonus categories categories we'll be talking about at the end and one of which is my personal favorite. The color wheel is a little bit complex but there's three main categories that you need to know. Primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. I have the opportunity to be able to teach for free outside of my paid courses and workshops thanks to our sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative professionals with over 25,000 classes in photography, business, finance, design, and so much more. There's a class I recommend on Skillshare by a woman named Patricia. Now Patricia has a two-part class where she covers all of the ins and outs of the color wheel. Patricia is an illustrator, so all the classes on Skillshare are taught by industry professionals. Premium membership is about $10 a month and it gives you unlimited access to these classes. You can join more than 7 million creators learning on Skillshare today. Use the link down below in my description box to get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. There's so much you can learn in two months. And if you want to continue to support my channel and the free tutorials I bring you here on this platform, check out the link below. To begin, let's talk about complementary colors. Complementary colors are two colors opposite each other on the color wheel. For example, and I'm gonna use my own images throughout this video for reference so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So blue and orange are complementary colors because blue and orange are opposite each other on the color wheel. Another combination is red and green. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. You could also do green and pink for a little bit more of a modern update. Another complementary color combination is yellow and purple. Analogous colors are three colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. I'm gonna pull up a photo of Jenny where we use analogous colors. So we use yellow, green, green, and blue, green in this particular portrait. And this photo does feel very calm and all the colors live in harmony with one another. And this is because we did choose the more cool toned colors. Now. Also, with the styling in this photo, it also adds to the very soft feel. So her hair, all curly, very fluffy, the textures in her top. So we did like a corduroy button down that's very soft and textured and then a fluffy knit sweater and then also the hazy lens effect. So this just feels very serene and peaceful. What's fun about color in art is that different colors will evoke different feelings in your work. For more information about color play and how a single color can really drive home a certain point or evoke a certain feeling emotion I have a video on five colors one model it's a really fun video I recommend you to check it out after this one so next up we have my favorite way to use color in portrait photography at least at the moment is monochromatic colors monochromatic colors are all of the colors of a single hue so all reds all greens all blues all purples the most obvious way to use monochromatic colors in your photography is matching the background, the environment with the clothes on your subject. For more examples on monochromatic colors, here is a portrait of one of my clients, actually Sabrina. She watches my video, so hi Sabrina. So as you can see, her dress is pink, her hair is red, and the magnolia tree she's kind of popping through is also pink. So the overall edit of this image contains pink shadows and violet highlights, making it very pink overall. Pink to me is very soft and her expression in this particular image also reflects the bubbly feel, the playfulness of the pink. So this is one easy example of what monochromatic could look like. So here's another example. This is more neutral. We matched her silver top 
to the silver kind of gray background. For a more obvious example, here is an all yellow portrait of Sophie. We did a full DIY studio shoot on this. She's wearing yellow top, yellow background. Here's another studio example of all green. So Isabella is wearing a green top, green pants, and a green background. Here's another portrait of Sophie where she's wearing blue and the environment itself is blue, the background. So this ties into matching the outfit, the styling directly to the environment. I do have a video for those who want to learn what to wear in portraits or what to suggest your clients wear in portraits. And I'll have that linked in an iCard, but I do suggest in that video that if you want your portraits and the overall feel to be very harmonious, then I suggest having the outfit coordinate with the environment in the sense of wearing the same tones. For example, here's a portrait of Valerie. She's wearing a very pale periwinkle dress. It's very soft in the background and the edit of the photo. Now the editing does come into play a little bit with making it feel a little bit more gray toned matches with the backdrop of the soft greens and a little bit of the blue. Again, here's a portrait of one of my clients from earlier this year in Soho. She's wearing a lot more cool tones, the gray sweater, the blue jeans, the white top against the blue backdrop. In both these portraits, the color palette really is reliant on the environment itself. This helps make the image feel very harmonious and well put together. So while these are within the same color palette, you could also directly match your environment very intentionally as well, which is something that I love to do in my portrait photography. I personally feel like this can add a little bit more of a cinematic element to your photographs in combination with great composition and framing, which I also have a video on. Hmm, surprise, surprise. As you can see in these portraits, my subject matches the background almost exactly, not only in color, but also in pattern. Here's a photo of my friend Jasmine, who remembers this behind the scenes portrait session. I did a video on photographing my friends who aren't models, but they might as well be models. She's wearing green, which is a very rich and moody color. I talk about this in the five backgrounds one model video I referred to earlier but green to me is very elegant and that is reflected in her dress she's wearing like a green evening gown that's perfect she's up against this charcoal Soho building with the beautiful vines as you can see by now I love playing with color in my portraits and I have a few other color combinations that I personally love in combination with symmetry and composition and I want to walk you through some of those examples so that you can also get even more inspiration so first up is this portrait of Jasmine and I just showed you Jasmine with the green dress. Here she is in a brown dress with blue polka dots. And then we have her up against the side of a building that is also blue. And I think that in combination with her pose, the fire hydrant with all the water, okay, waste of water, but in the portrait, it's very whimsical. And the framing, I think that this is very uh, thematic almost. Here's a portrait of one of my clients in Seattle in a green restaurant she's wearing red hat red blouse or red dress and then big blue boots and I love how this is almost like a color blocking because of how much red she's wearing she's wearing full sleeves of red long boots of blue it's not just a tiny touch but it's very chunky almost I really love it my most favorite color combination on earth is pink and red together it's so cute and it's almost um, analogous. Here's a portrait of Camry in a pink jumpsuit, red underneath. She has a red lip and then she's up against a pink backdrop. And this is in uh, Seattle. My favorite location of all is this closed movie theater. It's beautiful. Another color combo I love is green and purple. I have quite a few examples of green and purple. First one is this portrait where he is wearing green pants and then the background is green, but he's holding some purple flowers. That's a very subtle way to do green and purple. Another is Jean. Uh, who remembers this behind the scenes video, but he's up against a green backdrop. And then I have purple being incorporated from some fun lens effects. Another portrait is Valentine from 
Paris. This was a really fun shoe and he is wearing more of a purple burgundy top against a green backdrop. And lastly for green and purple is one of my clients in New York wearing purple up against the green backdrop. Another fun combination is orange and green. So I have Delia. This was my first ever photo shoot all on film where I wasn't doing film and digital just as a backup only film. We did it behind the scenes on this one, uh, but Delia is wearing a orange button up against a green background. And I think that this is really fun. And then also primary color combinations can be cool too. So here's a photo of me last year with red, blue, and yellow. So I'm wearing a red jacket, blue dress, and then up against a yellow mailbox. To me, as long as all the tones are from kind of the same color family, I think that it can work. The more intentional you can be with these details, the better result you will get with your photography. If you end up going out and doing a photo shoot based off of the tips this video be sure to share the photos and the end result with me you can share them over in my free photography facebook group build and bloom i'll have it linked down below it's an incredible free community full of 60,000 encouraging kind photographers go share it in the facebook group you can join down below i hope that this video was helpful i hope that it brought you some inspiration if you enjoyed be sure to hit subscribe down below that way you're notified when a new tutorial for your business comes out because i make them every single week. If you can't get enough of the free photography tutorials on YouTube, I also share on a daily basis free tools and resources over on Instagram, whether it's through my stories or Instagram live Q and A's where I can interact with you with more of a one-on-one -on -one experience and answer your specific questions about your specific business. I'm going to have Build and Bloom linked down below as well as Skillshare. Don't forget, take advantage of the two month free trial. It's not an affiliate link. I don't make a commission when you sign up but it does help support my channel so I can continue to bring you free tutorials on a weekly basis. I believe in you and your business and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.